So what they're giving us in this case is if we're going to graph this, because I might say to graph something. So we know that this is kind of like a distance of 3 from the, from the center, right? And then the angle is negative 1 third, which is going to be in the negative direction down here. I could say like negative 1 third or negative pi over 3 is like down there, right? And it has a distance of 3, which will count as like rings. So we could say my point is roughly right around there. Would you guys agree with me? Looks about right, feels about right, sounds about right. Um, so if I'm looking into writing this down, remember our conversion is basically what we're looking for is um, what are those x and y coordinates? And we did, and you know, I'll show this to you one more time. I don't want you to get this confused with vectors, but I want to again explain this. If we were going to write this as a vector, if we're given our angle and our magnitude, because that's basically what 3 is, is like our magnitude. If we were going to write this as a vector, our vector would be cosine of theta times sine of theta. And what's nice about that is whatever our vector is, that's going to give us our terminal point. And that's what we're looking for, is the terminal point. We're not really talking about vectors. I'm just relating it to what you've already done. So it'd be 3 times the cosine of negative pi over 3 times the sine of negative pi over 3. Right? And that's going to give us our terminal point of our vector. But we're not really talking about vectors. We're just actually talking about what are the x and y coordinates of this. So all we're simply going to do is for a defined x, you're going to do r times the cosine of theta. So that's my r, that's my theta. So 3 times the cosine of negative pi over 3. Thankfully, I left that up there. Let's go and look at that, guys. Pi over 3, the cosine is 1 half. But if we're looking at negative 1 half, that's going to be in the fourth quadrant. Cosine is still going to be positive. So it's still just going to be 1 half. So that's going to be 3 halves. Then we do the y, which is r times the sine of theta, right? Because didn't you see you just doing we do? Which is 3 times the sine of, theta, uh, sine of negative pi over 3. Right? Isn't that what they're doing to find the y coordinate of that vector? Yes? That's what we're doing to find the y coordinate. We're just multiplying 3 times the sine of that. That would give you the y coordinate of that vector. We're not talking about vectors, but again, it's just a relation. Um, so sine of negative pi over 3 is going to be 3 squared of 3 over 2. However, we're dealing with negative, which is down in the fourth quadrant. So sine is now ne negative. Very good. So, so now we have my point, 3 halves, comma, negative 3, square root of 3 over 2. To make sure we did this correct, does that at least give us a point that's in the fourth quadrant? Is our x coordinate positive and our y coordinate negative? Yes? Yes? And then if you really wanted to even double check, you guys could see it looks like it's less than three rings and more than, um, and less than probably two over there. So if I was just going to calculate negative three square root of three divided by two, that's negative 2.5, 2.59. So does that look like the kind of the point on an x and y coordinate over here? Because that would be 1, 2, 3. So you're between 1 and 2. And then 1, 2, and 3, you're at between 2 and 3. Yeah. Yes, Andrew. So are those three endpoints like, that, like distance? Yeah, it's okay. like here's the x, here's the y. That's 1, that's 2, that's 3. That's negative 1, that's negative 2, that's negative 3. It's still an x and y coordinate. All I'm saying is what we're doing is by using polar coordinates, we're just introducing, we're calling our, we're giving angles in terms of their um, distance from the center, which is we're using r to represent that, as well as their angle in standard position. All right. Yes? Yes, we'll be talking about that.